So just over two years since its release, Bloodborne is getting another unexpected boom in people playing it. Even without searching for it on YouTube, I can see at least one person streaming it. Maybe it's because PewDiePie tweeted about it. I don't know. Who cares, though? Instead, let's just give some tips for the newbies just starting out. Tip number one. Be more aggressive than a cop chasing a black man. Alright, racial humor aside, Bloodborne is fast and is difficult as it places at least 15 enemies in one area at the start of the game. Their attacks deal heavy damage and can be overwhelming for some. Luckily though, if you're aggressive enough, you can kill enemies before they even swing at you. By being the aggressor, you force most of the mob enemies to wait until you run out of stamina or they get a lucky hit in. Even if you get hit too, there's a mechanic that regenerates health if you attack back. When a health bar turns orange instead of its usual red, that means to get in there and get your health back. So go on, be aggressive. Spam that R1 button like a Dark Souls 3 straight sword using piece of shit. <clears throat> Tip number two. Pairing is probably the most efficient way of killing the enemies that has ever existed. Well, almost the most efficient. You see, if you fire your gun right before an enemy's attack is about to hit, you hear this glorious sound from on high as they collapse to their knees. Run up to them. Press the R1 button. Press the R1 button to add like a doctor and perform open organ surgery. These are what we call visceral attacks, and they deal a lot of damage. You can even increase the damage dealt from visceral attacks by increasing the amount of skill you have. In any other circumstance, your gun is a piece you're best used to either draw aggro or finish an already weak enemy. That's not the only way to get visceral, however. By fully charging a heavy hit and attacking the enemy's back, you can also drive into a visceral state. Allow me to show you a demonstration of our good hunter performing a prostate exam on a mutated pig. Ah, uh, let's see what we have here. Ooh, looking dirty there, Mr. Pig. Well, time to clean you up the good old-fashioned way. And three, two, one. There you go. Good as new. See you in the nightmare. Tip number three. Hoard everything. Okay, research management is a huge part of this game. Like, crazy huge. At the start, at least. You see, there are three main things you want to keep track of. First are blood vials. These things are your Estus Flask of the Bloodborne. They heal 40% of your total HP, but you can only hold 20 of them at a time. You should know, however, that, cer that for certain boss fights, you may think you have enough vials, but you don't. So here's some ways to get blood vials in the first area of the game, where all the footage is. 1. Almost every basic enemy drops one blood vial. It's not guaranteed, it's just, it's just a really high chance. 2. Brick Trolls drop 2 blood vials. 3. Yahagul Hunters drop 2, sometimes 3 blood vials. Then there's Quicksilver Bullets. That's the other important item. Those are dropped by gunmen. You get 3 every time. Once you have 20 of each, they end up going into storage. Say so you have 20 vials on you, but you lose 5. Well, when you die and respawn, 5 get pulled out of storage and you start with 20. Long story short, hoard blood vials and bullets. Tip number four. Become the rune daddy. After killing a certain boss in the game, you get access to this great thing called Carol runes. That are essentially perks for your character. I don't go in depth on every rune, but for me, I just run the claw mark rune for 20% extra damage on a visceral, blood rapture for getting 300 health back on a visceral, Odin Rise for getting two extra bullets back on the visual, and the Hunter Covenant Room for extra stamina. So it's safe to see that in the late game, it's significantly harder to kill me as long as I'm consistently parrying. And thankfully, I am a parry god at this game! Tip number five. Get good!